Hello fellow tech geeks, I'm Young John, and today on First Look, we will be taking a look at the BenQ Digital Projector. This is model MH530 FHD. The FHD stands for Full High Definition. First, I'd like to thank BenQ for providing us with this unit for review, but it will in no way affect our opinions of this product or any other product that comes through our doors. If we take a look at the box, it says it is a digital projector with a power rating of 100 to 240 volts, 50 to 60 hertz, 2.60 amps. What that means is if you're lucky enough to live anywhere in the world, this will work. <laughs> in the US, in Asia, over in Europe, and in Africa, wherever there is electricity, a steady stream of electricity, this is bound to uh, do its job. So what else does it say? Ecofax, uh, they want you to know that this is eco-friendly. This is arsenic-free optical glass, BFR PVC-free casing plastics, PVC-free plastic packaging, and that's about it. Let's open her up and see what gives. We have a remote control, some cables here. Looks like a VGA cable, the power cord, be very gentle and careful. Uh, empty box, your instruction set. We have our BPC arsenic free plastic casing. And here is the lovely projector. It's kind of pretty and it's wide, it's plastic all around. Uh, there's a nice texture on top, it gives it a nice little elegant feel to it. Uh, the front has this glass element here where it actually projects, and this looks like an infrared port for. Uh, your remote control. If we look at the top, I guess this is where all the controls are. We have the focus right over here, we have the zoom right next to it, and we have most of the controls right on top here. We have power, we have source, keypad control, menu, back, eco blank, whatever that means. On the back, you have your mother load of inputs. You have a lot. The most important bit is probably the HDMI 1 and 2. You have an audio in and an audio out in case you wanna connect it to some nice speakers. Interestingly, you have two computer inputs, which is like VGA ports, an RS-232 port. That's like an old serial port. This is where you connect modems from a long time. If you even know what a modem is, that's where you would connect a modem you have a USB mini port, which might come in handy. And you also have a video in and a super video. If you have a DVD player, I suppose you can use those. Uh, but this thing has got you covered for any kind of input. But most likely you will be interested in the two HDMIs. Game consoles, Blu-ray, laptops, that kind of thing. Okay, the side has a big grill and a vent for air. And the other side is also a big grill, vent for air. And the funny thing about this side is that it's got a little fan in there and the fan says Foxconn. Foxconn makes iPhones. They're a contract manufacturer and I'm surprised that they even make little fans. It's like a computer fan. So their reach is everywhere, man. They make everything. Now, if we look at the bottom, we have three little feet that adjusts up and down. So I guess you can, you know, set this thing going up, going down and you have to twist this, it's gonna take forever. So I think this is what this little knob is for. So you can just kind of, yes, so you can pull it out all the way and just kind of fine tune it once you get really close. You don't wanna be twisting this thing all the way in. Physically, that's what it's like. Let's connect it to something and see what the projection is like. So obviously we're gonna need a pretty large wall because this thing can project up to a 300 inch picture. Uh, so I think I don't have a wall that big, but I think the wall behind us will work just fine. Let's set it up for that. So we've taken the BenQ projector and put it on a table uh, to project to the wall behind us. And basically we've plugged in the power cable and an HDMI cable. Now the HDMI didn't come with this package. So unless you have one lying around, you need to go buy one. The VGA cable is good for computers, but I don't have one that fits this. so. So I've connected an HDMI cable to my laptop and we're going to turn this on. So now let's focus. 
And there's a throw, so let's see if we can make it bigger. Yeah. Let's raise the picture up, and to do that, we're going to just raise one of the three feet. The front one will do just fine. And now let's fine tune this. I'm gonna keystone this because it's a little bit hewed. Let's see. Oh, that's the wrong way. Let's keystone the other way. That looks about good. This BenQ can project up to 300 inches. And while I don't have that kind of space, I've still measured about 115 inches on my own wall. And even then it's still pretty big. The brightness goes up to 3,300 lumens. And this place is lit up like a Christmas tree. It's really, really bright, but you can still see the picture clearly. And what I'm gonna do is just turn off the lights and you can see how much more clear it is. So we will turn off a lot of the ambient light and it becomes that much clearer. Now, having turned off the lights, it's got a great contrast ratio of 15,000 to one, and it's great up to 120 inches. So you can see that the contrast is still really, really good. And being that this is a 1080p projector, you won't see any dots. It's got a 10,000 hour lamp life. So if you watch three hours a day, 365 days a year, that is... How many hours is that? Uh, that's... Estimate about a thousand hours a year. It'll last you about 10 years, which is a very, very long time. You'll probably have upgraded to something else before you have used 10,000 hours of this projector. So here's the thing, the picture is great, the colors are bright, but the audio is only two watts. The volume only goes up to 10, that's maximum. And for two watts, it's not very loud. It's pretty quiet. So unless I can raise it up from the source, Even then it's kind of thin and it doesn't sound so good. So I would recommend getting your own powered speaker to get a good, decent sound. This is 1080p. It's an amazing picture and you're not seeing any dots. You're gonna have to come really, really close in order to see anything. Now we're gonna do a little pixel peeping and this is a 1080p projector, but you can hardly see any pixels. I mean, here's my hand, right? And Look at that, I mean, you don't see any dots. The resolution is just really amazing for what it is. If we go really close, there it is. Here is my hand, my finger. This is impossible to see from where you'll be watching this anyway. So amazing resolution, great contrast, great colors, as you can see. And this is only because we're using a video camera. Uh, when you're watching this live, it looks so much better. Now I wanna go into the menu system and show some of the options. In the display section, there's a wall color. If you have different colored walls, you have different aspect ratios, leave it on automatic. Keystoning is on the remote control, so you don't have to go in here for that. And it's got digital zoom and it's got 3D functionality if you have a 3D source file. Uh, you'll also need glasses for them, so you're gonna have to get your own 3D glasses. In the picture, you have picture mode. sRGB is a good color space. It's got cinema, it's got presentation. I would leave it at sRGB. You've got a whole bunch of other controls that have brightness, contrast, color. You also have color temperature. And a lot of this you don't really have to fiddle with because it already looks good by itself. But if you wanted to play around with the picture and the color and the contrast, this would be the area to do it in. Next is the source. It's got a quick auto search, so it'll search by itself. So if you plug something in, it'll automatically find it. You don't have to worry about selecting a source. System setup has presentation timer, language, menu settings, operations, whole bunch of things. In the advanced system settings, you have high altitude mode in case you're higher than 1500 meters. You have a fan speed, which is left on normal. You have audio settings. <laughs> Leave it alone because you only have 10 audio settings from 0 to 10, but it's not really loud anyway. You have lamp settings, security settings, you have baud rate, which is really for maintenance. So I would leave that alone. You have a test pattern, which will show you a grid. So when you're setting it up, you can use this test pattern to see, you know, if you have the full screen that you want. And finally, you have the information about what the native resolution is 
and your picture mode and resolution, lamp mode, all of that stuff. So if you want to quickly know what's happening and what the setup is in your system, this is where you go for that. Finally, there's an eco blank button. And if you press that, it says save up to 70% of your lamp power. Time to do your part in saving the planet. So we are in fact saving the planet. Press it again and the screen will come right back to life. So I wanted to show how this looked when you're playing a video game. I have it connected to a PS3 console. And this is basically what it looks like. I was worried about the lag time, but it seems to be all right for casual gaming. If you're doing esports or something very, very involved, you might need a monitor for that. But for most other things, for general use, this seems to be quite all right. All in all, it's great for our huge screen entertainment, watching movies, playing games and music videos, all of that stuff. So let's recap. At $549, you're getting a very, very big screen up to 300 inches, which is huge. It's really, really bright. It's got great contrast, good color, and it's got a 10,000 hour lamp life. The only downside of it being that it's got a two watt speaker, which is too low, but it's got an audio out plug so you can put some powered speakers in there. And with a three year warranty, it's great value for money. Thank you very much for watching this video of the BenQ MH530FHD. If you enjoyed watching this video, please click on the like button and don't forget to subscribe to First Look. We shall see you all again next time.